Okay, guys. Future Chase here. Uh, I've already lived through the episode that you're about to watch. You guys know that my job with Brian is to translate the knowledge, the massive amount of knowledge that he has as good as I can. Heads up, didn't do a good job in this episode. Luke and I were watching through the edit, and what we're going to talk about with valve adjustments gets deep. If you guys actually are wanting to do valve adjustments, you have to listen super close, and you're probably going to have to watch this video a couple times. We're going to insert some future content uh, in this video from me now that might simplify it, or at least it would have simplified it for the person that I was then. That's our hope. I hope you guys are ready, because uh, the rabbit hole starts here. Everybody in the comments, let uh, tell Brian congrats. His uh, cruiser is now rideable. He got to ride it in today, and it was very exciting for him. So I was very excited. Let him know in the comments. Congrats on getting your cruiser put together. Can I shout your Instagram out? Uh, sure. Yeah, it's I, on the screen now. So I'm not gonna do anything because right. it's like D Brian Cruz WBR. Bri Brian Cruz WBR. That. Go check it out if you want to see Brian's cruiser. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Chase on two wheels here with. A nice, refreshing opening of a can. Right here, we got the CBR 600 engine. If you guys are curious what this engine is, it's part of our Wreck Bike Rebuild series where we take Wreck Bikes, turn them into Dream Bikes, and we give those bikes away to the beautiful people over on Patreon that support the show. If you are available to do that, go down below and do that because it's allowing us to even do the show. So, in today's episode, we're going to teach you guys how to do a valve adjustment on a CBR 600 engine. This is a 2008. And when I say we, I don't mean me. I mean him. On the last episode, what we did was a valve inspection. We did lots of numbery things and figured out shims and all this kind of stuff. Today we're going to be doing a valve adjustment and I will ask as many questions as I possibly can to Brian to make sure that this gets done correctly and so I can translate the knowledge to you guys. So Brian, let's go! Yay! Okay, let's get to work. Yeah! <laughs> All right, Mr. B, we ordered a complete shim kit. This is way cheaper than I expected it to be, and we got it off Amazon. If you guys didn't watch the last episode of the inspection, I highly recommend you watch that before this episode. Brian goes into a lot of detail of like, what are shims, how do they work in the type of engine that we're gonna be working on. So if you don't know anything about what we're gonna do, you really need to watch that episode first. We'll have a link for it down in the description as we always do. So Brian, what's, as a technician, What's our first step of getting to the point where we can put the shims in? Step one would be setting the crankshaft to top dead center on the first cylinder so we can remove the camshafts. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do now? And that's what we're gonna do now. Boom. lined up with the mark in the cover. Okay. We also have on the end of the camshaft there's an IN mm -hmm. and an EX, so intake and exhaust. Okay. So that's lined up, that's lined up, that's lined up. Our engine is at top dead center, cylinder number one, lobes are up. Yes. So, right, we got top dead center and all the places that we need to check. Now we can remove the cam chain tensioner. Now, the tensioner has a big giant spring inside. Right. And as you loosen this, it's pushing back. Okay. So you want to do each bolt a little bit at a time so it kind of comes out evenly. Got it. You don't want to take one bolt out because then the pressure is uneven. So do like a clutch plate. Yeah, where spring. you want to do one and the other back and forth, back and forth until it comes out. Okay. This is the. There's our tensioner. <laughs> All right, so we're um, removing the caps. Yes. 
Okay, so these are the caps. Yep. These silver boys. There's uh, one, two, three. Wait, three? One, two, three. Oh, that, okay, got it. Threw a wrench in my plan for a second. I was like, I can see two. All right, so just screws out, guns out. Um, same thing we did with the tensioner. We're going to loosen them a little bit at a time, back and forth, all the way across. So these have tension, spring tension as well? Yeah, like all the valves that are pushed open right now are pushing up on the camshafts. Okay. So, and there are a bunch of valves that are open right now. Now, over here, there was one unit, and we went back and forth. Do we treat these as individual units? We treat them as one. They come off as one big unit. So they are three individual pieces. But oh, yeah, you, that's what I mean. If you look at them, the bolts are numbered. Okay. So those numbers are for the installation. That's the order in which you go through and tighten everything. These numbers. 2, 15, 1, 16. That's pretty cool that they do that. I was going to ask you earlier, I was going to wait until we got into the episode they, what the numbers are. Either they do it in here or you have to go to the manual for it one way or the other. So that's helpful that they It put is it on the because you don't have to look for the sequence. You just need to look for the spec. So this is like you just go one and numerically and just a little you, loosen, a little you loosen. Go, you know, one a little tight, two a little tight, all the way through the sequence until you get everything seated. And then you torque number one, number two, number three, number four, all the way through the sequence. All right. And then you're good. Right, intake exhaust cam. Okay. And then these are the three caps that hold it down, and then this is the chain guide that runs over the top of the cam gears where the chain is, just to make sure if anything else fails that the chain doesn't jump off. Right, and guys, this is just to make sure that the chain doesn't fall into the engine, because that would be a pain in the dick to have to get that out. Now that we've got everything out, and we have access to here, What's our next move? So from now here? we start removing the buckets and uh, measuring shims and swapping shims out. Is this what we did on the CBR 1000 where we got the magnet and just. Yes, sir. Okay. So time to remove buckets and shims. You got it. Yay. Removing buckets and shims with Brian. Here's our little tiny shim. Okay. That little hole right there is where it sits. Okay. Can you move your finger? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So when you put these shims in, they are a very snug fit. And you need to make sure that they sit perfectly flat in the groove. Because if they're like that... Wait, that's off? Can you see that it's on a tilt? Oh, I can see it from this angle. So if it's like that and it gets stuck like that, Bad when you bears. put the bucket on, it's taking up the space because it's not sitting in here flat. So oh, you just I need see. to make sure that they sit in there nice and flat when you put these in. Okay. Okay, our first shim is out and clean, and it is legible, and it is a 202. Okay, so what does 202 mean? So 202 is 2.02 millimeters. Oh, wait, does that correlate with the numbers? It does. Oh, okay. So now we need a thinner shim to put us back in our spec range. Sorry, the audio is going to be shit. So this one is uh, 0.007, and we need to make it between 0.01 and 0.12. So we need to make that space 0.01 or bigger. What space? The 0.007. Okay. Which so means we need a thinner shim to make more space. Okay. So we're Does that gonna... make sense? So currently this valve clearance that we measured is 0.007 That is the inches. space between... The cam and the and the top of the bucket. Okay, 0 .007, got yes. it. Yes. So we need to make it 
point one or point zero one to point zero one two by changing the shim size. Yes. Yeah, so we make <clears throat> we need to make the space bigger. Mm -hmm. So we need to make the shim smaller. smaller. So we're at a two uh, zero two. I think we need to go down to a one ninety five. What's going on guys? Future Chase, I know you might be confused because when Luke showed me this part of the edit, I got a little confused as well. And I was even there the day of. So I'm gonna try to boil this down to some dumb simplification to try to help you guys if you're in the same boat that I was. So we're dealing with four things right now, right? We have the little tiny shim. That is the big kit of all these tiny little circle things, right? Those are the shims. We then have these buckets that sit right on top of the shim. We then have this void space, this open space, and we have the cam. This open space, this open space is what we are measuring with the feeler gauges. So if we want this space to be more, we have to lower the size of the shim because the shim size is up and down. So that's the shim. So when the shim size goes down, that's going to lower the bucket and that's going to increase the free space in the middle. So when we talk about using smaller shims, we get bigger space. That confused the shit out of me. It also works in the same way. If we use a bigger shim, we are going to shrink the space that we have in between the cam and the bucket. Hopefully that makes sense and I kind of dumbified it for you. Let me know in the comments if it did. This is a 195 shim. All right, and we're just going to verify. If you'll hand me the loop, please. Oh, it would be my pleasure, sir. So this uh, shim kit came with this really cool little uh, like jeweler's loop kind of thing. And uh, it's just a, a little bitty magnifying glass and uh, it makes it so much easier to read these. Okay, so 195 for sure. So we grabbed the 195 shim. You pulled out a two what? A 202. So are we able to put the 202 in the 202 bucket area? Well, there isn't a 202 bucket. There is a 200 and a 205. There is no 202. So this is what I was saying, oh, that the manufacturer 202. shims go by every number, and then when you buy a shim kit, they go by every fifth. But you did say we can keep shims. Yes, we can keep, keep them, but we don't want to put it in the same spot. So when it comes to the 2.8, 2.85, 1.78, how, do these numbers correlate at all with the space? Like, are you just, so, are you based on knowledge you think that that size shim is gonna work? So this shim is a 2.02 .02 millimeter shim. Okay. This shim is a 1.95 millimeter shim. Right. It is 0 0.07 millimeters smaller Right, so we're, I'm shrinking the thickness. Right. Adding space in between the two. Right. And because the spec is so low, mm -hmm. it's, you know, um, it, we're, it's so tight that we need to make more than one step. Okay. Now, we may make more than one step, but it may be too much. We may have to do this again. So after we get all this changed, we put the cams back in, mm -hmm. timed, and then remeasure everything. And if we have to make a second round of changes, I see. Then we have okay. to make a second round of changes. This is <clears throat> some high level. Your math needs to be like yes and no. You just kind of have to be very. Um, well, I guess because at the end of the day, you're still going to be putting still have something to, in and yes, feeling so it. Still, so I mean, if you want your math to be super good, if you want to do this very quickly and do it once and be done, right. absolutely. You right. know, but we can kind of take our time with it. Okay. Instead of going through and measuring everything and converting everything into standard. Right. I'm just mixing the two and knowing that I need to put a thinner shim in mm -hmm. to give me my clearances. Gotcha. And I don't think a one size shim is going to put me where I want to be. I think it's going to put me at the very small end of the spec and I want to be at the bigger end or in Got the it. middle. Okay. So. If we have to do it again, we have to do it again. It's me that has to redo the labor. So this is the way I do things. Right. You know, um, it's really hard. Like when you have something like this where your shims are all in metric, a mm -hmm. 202 and a 195, and your micrometer is in standard. 
that makes things difficult. <coughs> right. So if this uh, that 202 was wiped clean and we couldn't read it, mm -hmm. and I had to measure it, yeah. and then I'm measuring it in standard, but my shims are in metric, so then I have to go through and find another shim and measure it and see where it's close and then go up or down, it's a little bit more work. It gets a little crazy. I like how you, the thing you said of like, what this episode is gonna show is why people don't want to do And we're already analogies. getting started. We're yeah, already that, getting started That's what I'm right saying, now. we're at the very onslaught of this and it's already like, dude, I got a migraine yeah. just thinking okay. about this. So when I put these shims in, this is just me, not sure if it helps or not, but I like to put the numbers facing up. So you could see it once you bring the nah, cap usually off? Usually when you pull the cap off, it sticks to the inside, so that doesn't really matter. Okay. What I'm looking for is I'm hoping that the numbers aren't gonna get ground off of it. Oh, okay. So if I put a smooth surface against a smooth surface, right. it's less likely to wear the numbers away. That makes then sense. Then if I was to flip it over and it would sit with the actual face of the valve mm -hmm. touching it and it would wear away the center of this one, you see like the, this one's not too bad, but a lot of times the middle number is what gets worn away. And that's yeah, what the tip of the valve is actually need touching. Yeah, and all that kind of shit. That's, yes. that's a good move. So I just try and put those um, in with numbers facing up. Cool. So now we get to do a whole bunch more of these. Okay, so this will help us do a little bit of our math. Okay. The feeler gauges are stamped with inches and metric. Oh, hell yes. Okay. So the 0 .07 is 0 .18 millimeters. Okay. Okay, so we need to go to, we need to do 11, which is 0 .28 millimeters. Okay. So that is a 0 0.1 millimeter difference. Okay. And what we did in our math is we did, well, 0.15? Yeah, we went 0 0.17. Okay. So that should probably put us right at the big end of our spec. Okay. <clears throat> Hypothetically, if all the numbers make yes. sense. Okay. Cool? Cool. Okay. Future Chase again, and uh, this is where, this is the rabbit hole I went down. So a lot of numbers are being talked about, so I wanna clarify what the numbers are real quick. If you guys hear us talking about a 1.95, a 2.00, a 2.02, these are shim sizes. These are the numbers that correlate with how thick our shim is. Now, you're also gonna hear us talk about feeler sizes. These uh, correlate with our feeler gauge. Now. This is where it got confusing for me because we were talking about the feeler gauge. We would call it eight or seven or six. And what we were referring to was on our feeler gauge, we have a 0 .006 feeler gauge. That corresponds to a metric size of 0 0.15. This number over here on the shim sizes are in metric. We kept referring to them in the standard sizes. That's where it got confusing. I'm not gonna write out all of the feeler sizes, but if you guys notice we're talking about 0 0.15 and all that kind of stuff, that's metric. If we say seven, eight, nine, six, that is the standard feeler gauge size. Hopefully that makes sense. Again, with the feeler gauge, we're measuring the open space above the bucket. If we're talking about the shim size, we're talking about the actual size of the shim that we put in. Hopefully that makes sense. Again, let us know in the comments if this makes a little more sense for you guys, because there's probably a lot of you guys out there that got confused as hell as this uh, with this. So hopefully this helps. Okay, back to the video. Oh, I don't think I'm gonna be able to read this one. 175, man, you gotta love it. I need little, one of these. Little dude helped. <laughs> yeah. I wanna get you one of those things that you put on like your glasses and you hook it on <laughs> And we need to make it thinner, so we need to do a 170. Hey look, not a 195. Yeah. There we go. Did you hear the little click? I did, that yeah. was it sitting in its spot. Okay. So unfortunately, it doesn't really make a lot of sense for us to put the cams back in if we still have to. Sad times. Yeah. But what we can do is uh, we can put them back in. The intakes are done, so we don't have to worry about those. We could drop the cams in and remeasure 
everything and make sure that we're good for the ones that we've done. Okay. And that'll give us information for the ones that we're about to do. Okay. So we can't finish the job today, but we can at least double check that the work we've done is... Thus far is correct. Okay. Yes. So let's get to doing that. Now you want to start with your exhaust cam and there is a reason for that. The direction of the rotation of the motor pulls from the exhaust side. Pulls the chain in this direction. Yes. Okay. So you want to set, pull all your slack out from the exhaust side of the chain okay. and start from there because okay. you want all the excess slack to be on the intake side. Got it. So you want to make sure that you start tight here and then tight to the net and then the rest of the flop will be on that side. Oh, because the adjuster's on that this side, side to take up the slack. Got Correct. It. Okay. So this is the not fun part. Is there a fun part to any of this adjustment? Oh, because you're having to guess the tooth to get into. Yes. Yeah, that's, that doesn't sound like a fun part. That should be it right there. If I go one more, where am I at? So get That's it into, the get where you think it is in the teeth, drop it in, in place, see if it's parallel. If it's not, pull it out, go one, one more tooth. tooth. And then okay, continue to do that until you got it that way. At yeah. least that way you're doing it precisely, right? You're, you're hoping to. Now, the reason why I'm saying you're hoping to is if you can see the camshaft right now, it's not in here flat. Okay. It can't be in here flat because these lobes are pushing on the valve springs that are closed right, right now. And this won't lay flat until we put the caps on and compress Slowly everything. Slowly move everything down. So you want to yeah. try and make sure. Did you get this thing? Because you don't want to on and off, on and off with the caps. Doesn't sound like a fun Okay, time. so... Get this in here, like so. Get on the chain. That might be it, or is that it? I think that is as close as we're gonna get it. Okay. Okay, so that looks good. So you and got just in flat. Double check flat. here, make sure that nothing's moved. Okay. You have the T, the line to the right of T touching the little n notch. And that's where it needs to be. Okay. And now we will reinstall our caps. If you can get your dowel pins lined up and started, you'll be a much happier camper when you drop these in. You put your camshafts back and you want to turn the motor over really really slow why do you need to turn the motor now you want over? to turn the motor over really really slow just in case something is wrong <laughs> what will it like, how do you know if something's wrong so if you start turning this thing over by hand and all of a sudden it stops turning don't force it just stop just stop okay go back take everything apart start over again okay you don't want it because if the timing is off for some reason Mm -hmm. and the piston's coming up and the valves are open and they hit each other, mm -hmm. you are almost guaranteed to bend the valve. So be very delicate in this situation. So you're turning it over by hand, do it very, very slowly, and you're trying to see if it's going to stop you anywhere. Okay. If it does it and you can get a full rotation of the motor and everything seems smooth, turn it over a couple of times, set it back at top dead center, and do your measurements. Okay. So this is one of those things where you don't just want to stick a tool on it and... You know, start turning the motor over this big ratchet because you, you can you break things. So we're just going to turn it very slowly. Can you put uh, the actual video? 
Okay, that was one full rotation. One full rotation and nothing hit. Correct. Okay. I like to do this too. So what is what is that doing? So I just took the extension and I put it inside the spark plug hole, and now this is representative of where the piston is at. Whoa! Oh, because it's going all the way through the spark plug hole. And it's literally resting on top of the piston. I see. That's pretty cool. That's a neat shot. So you really don't typically want to do this with a piece of steel on top of your piston. Mm -hmm. But the extension is v very smooth at the end. And you can actually see where the piston will stop on the way up. Right there. So that's where you know for a fact it's top dead center. And then if you come over here and you take a look, we're set. <laughs> and you just were able to tell that off the top mm -hmm. of it. Okay. So it's a little off. I can turn it a couple of degrees and it's not going to move the piston anywhere. And now right. that's perfectly at the T mark. Right. That's pretty cool. That's a pretty cool way of doing it too. It's a uh, very physical. You get to watch it go up, kind of chill, and then come it's, back it's down. Verifiable. Right. So this is a shortcut to measuring your valves to seeing if they're within your spec or not. I'm going to sneeze first. Okay. Part of the shortcut? Yep. So part of the shortcut to check to see with, if you're within spec is if you grab the feeler gauge that's at the low end of the spec, a 0 0.10. Okay. The next feeler gauge above your spec, uh -huh. the small one should go in and the big one should not. Oh. Right? Okay. Makes sense? Yeah. Okay, so if you just want to be quick and dirty about your inspection, you pull, out, quick and dirty. you pull out two shims, the low spec and the high spec. Okay. And the small one should go mm -hmm. and the big one should not. And if that does, you, you're, you're within the bubble. Got it. Should we change them? Well, I know we do still have to do those four, but do we do leave it at the 0 0.010? I mean, what's the spec uh, in between? Uh, 0 0.010 to 0 0.012. As broken in as this motor is, not much is going to change after this. So we're only off by 0 0.001. Correct. They still need to be changed, though, for those four. So what about, you're, oh, you're saying for these? Yes. Oh. Because they're, they're now at the tight side of the spec. They're not in the middle. Yeah. Do we leave them at the tight side of the spec or do we open them up? Are we able to get these to point zero one one? We can get them to between point zero one zero and zero one two. And that's by upping the shims or lowering the shims. Making the shims smaller, making the space bigger. So if we change these to the different shims, then we get all of our 1.95s back and that we could potentially use elsewhere. So if I change those 195s to 190s, mm -hmm. the gap may be too big <clears throat> at that point. Uh, so that's what we're wondering. Do we change these 195s to 190s and how much of this is gonna get changed? <laughs> like what would you estimate it goes to from 0 0.10? It could be right at the 0.13 or 0 0.013. It could be just out of the spec. I mean, does this close to the spec is that a good thing? Like we're, it's I, like, honestly, is it like for, a close enough thing? For a, um, for a high performance machine, I like to set my clearances on the tight side of the spec so the valves open higher. You know, it's not a huge thing, but it's one of those things where it's the little things that make power. So you would rather us up these numbers to the higher ones? I mean, if this is going to be a race bike. Which it is, yep. <clears throat> then whoever's using this thing is going to go and do this probably once a season. Yeah. Instead of every, you know, 10,000 miles, they'll do it every three or 4,000 miles because they're wringing the bike out. Yeah, all the miles are, are wrung out. So, um, you know, I would hope that anybody that would put this thing on the track would go in and inspect the valves for it mm -hmm. after the season. Not after one session, but if you, you take it to the track three, four times, five right. times, six times, you know, you may want to go in there and take a peek every now and again. Is there any performance gains from getting this to 0 .010 and M zero? Maybe. I would love to actually see if that worked, honestly, yeah. 
to go in and... Dude, that'd be so much work to find out yes. if... And then you got writer... Well, no, you take it to the dyno. You oh, need okay. specific actual right. numbers. I mean, I say we go in there and, like, change it since we're already going to be changing all the other ones anyway, right? So if we change it and then they're too big, then we have to go back. Oh. Then fuck that. We keep them like that. Because we know this is, a, this is a known thing and we're that close. Yes. If it's not guaranteed that it's going to be the other way, then I say we're good here. Because okay. there's no point in playing that many. This is a long game to play the take it off, put it back on game. Yep. I mean, we have to do it once already. We, do we really want to do it a, a third time? Okay. Executive order, we keep this. Okay. So we still need those four 195 shims, and everything else in here is good. Cool. And then we still have to go through all the intakes? Uh, the intakes I just measured, and they're all within the bubble now. Because they were all, except for two, already in the <clears throat> already in the bubble right <clears throat> i changed those two shims and now everything is within the bubble so we're in, in that case then four we shims need... and we can take the cams back out swap the shims out put everything back together again and that's done but since we're not doing that on this video we're good to exit now we're good from that's here, a full valve adjustment yeah from here yeah i mean we're obviously we're not complete but well obviously you have to put from, the top back on and all that kind of shit but yeah, we're we're for for today's uh, filming sake yes that would be the completed okay so that's a valve adjustment on a 2008 cbr 600 rr hope you enjoyed it <laughs> but seriously uh hopefully you guys got some information and have a, at least a better understanding of when you take your bikes in this is what a tech has to do to inspect and then adjust your valves. Now, as we told you guys, we're not done, but the goal for this episode was to kind of take you guys through the process. So we're going to do some stuff behind the scenes because as you guys saw, it's monotonous. It yeah, is a you guys lot don't of, need to see us do it again. Yeah, it's uh, a lot of doing once, do once is enough. Over. So uh, that's going to be it for this episode. On the next episode, we're going to mess with the oil pump and the oil pickup screen. Is that correct? Uh, it's either going to be the oil pump or the clutch, whichever last right, one or two have, parts comes in first. Right. So we are waiting on some parts for this. And uh, for you guys that are fans of the CBR1000 engine build, we're not going to be tearing this engine apart as much as we tore the 1000 apart because this engine is actually in good working order. So. We're going to uh, replace the clutch, and we're going to uh, work on the oil pump. we got some more parts coming in for that. So stay tuned for those episodes. Make sure to subscribe to get uh, updated. And if you guys want to support the show and get episodes a couple weeks ahead of time, that's over on Patreon, link down below. Outro crew, let us know in the comments down below. Uh, scale of 1 to 10, how long is Brian's beard? So what's 10 and what's 1? Is 1 like clean shaven and 10 is like ZZ top? Yes. I mean, is that the scale? If if it's everybody on knew, <laughs> outro crew, we uh, you guys know we love you a little bit more than everybody else. Okay, bye. If I was only to the level of Pi May, mm -hmm. yeah. So there's Pi May ZZ Top. I've got a bit of Pi May eyebrows. <laughs>